What's up? Welcome back into the LFC Transfer Room. My name's Jack. Today's video sees another Jack join the channel. It's Jack Collins, a Fulham fan who's going to offer some great insight and some tactical analysis on Fabio Carvalho, Liverpool's newest signing, and how he will fit into Jurgen Klopp's system in the 2022-2023 season. Make sure to subscribe for that and a lot more in the upcoming weeks and months. Let's get into today's video. Well, Fulham have returned to the Premier League, gaining promotion by winning the EFL Championship. And one of their key cogs, Fabio Carvalho, a guy who scored nine goals and picked up seven assists in the league, is now moving on to Liverpool, which is an obvious loss for the newly promoted side. Jack offers some initial thoughts on Fabio Carvalho. Well, firstly, lads, thank you for having me back on the channel. Um, obviously, as a Fulham fan, it's always disheartening to lose a player of unbelievable quality, especially when it's done in the way that it has happened and the, the fact that the contracts run down. Now, obviously, there has been something put in place between Liverpool and Fulham after the kind of shambles of the Harvey Elliott deal, I think. And, and that's important, right? And the fact that that went to tribunal, both clubs were keen to avoid that happening again. And the fact that there has been a fee and a sell-on clause inserted into this does make it a little bit easier to stomach. Obviously, you can see it from Fabio's point of view, right? You can see the fact that he wants to go and test himself at the highest level, he wants to go and join a side who, at the time of recording, are in a Champions League final, and by the time this goes out, might well be Champions League winners. You can completely understand why a player of this caliber and this quality wants to go and test himself. Obviously, he's a little bit sad in the way that he was such a key cog at Fulham this season under Marco Silva. He was that 10, that playmaker that made things happen. Um, and I think when that happens, we've got to work out, you know, what's best for him and his career. And I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, it would have been nice, perhaps, for him to get a year in the Premier League. Obviously, we lost Ryan Sesson. You're not under similar circumstances, but in a similar kind of situation, the kind of boy wonder who had come through, been key part of the, the championship promotion side a couple of years back. He played a season in the Premier League for Fulham and then left for Tottenham, obviously. So it would have been nice to see Fabio have a go at Fulham in the Premier League, but ultimately you can completely understand. Uh, it's going to be a difficult hole to fill, but... You know, I think there's a lot of people here that wish Fabio nothing but success. And he's treated him, you know, treated the fans and treated everyone around the club immaculately. So it's been said and, and I think that helps. So, yes, it's heartbreaking to lose a little starlet and someone who I think is going to go on to do great things. Uh, but ultimately can completely understand it as well. So how did Marco Silva and Fulham line up and how did Fabio Carvalho play a role in that side? Yeah, I mean, he's played literally completely as a 10 for Fulham this season. Marcus Silva has played a 4-2-3-1. He has been the player closest to Mitrovic um, in, in that 10 role and has kind of played almost as his shadow in, in many ways and playing that kind of shadow striker role. He's the one that goes on ahead of the striker to press sometimes. He's the player that can drop in and make things happen. Um, I think the really interesting thing about Fabio Stella players is that he's quite small, quite slight, um, but isn't afraid at all to get stuck in. His work rate's incredibly high. He's happy coming deeper, picking up the ball and driving with it into space. And and I think that's one, what Fulham are going to miss most, but two, what makes him such an interesting prospect is the fact that he can carry the ball. He is a brilliant ball progressor as well as having the nous and the ability to get on things in the final third and, and make things happen. He's got 10 goals and eight assists for Fulham in 36 games this season. It's a goal contribution every 79 minutes or so in the championship. We all know how physical, how difficult a league the championship can be. So for someone of his stature and his age, obviously, to go on and, and kick on and, and put up those kind of numbers, I think, even in a dominant Fulham side, is incredibly impressive. He's not really been able to change things from wide. Is the only thing I would kind of push back as a an option. He hasn't played all that much time there, but when Fulham have been chasing games towards the end of things and sort of get as many strikers on the pitch as possible, get as many forwards on the pitch as possible, he has been shifted into wide roles. I think he's far less effective there, um, which is an interesting one considering how Liverpool set up. Um, but I think on the whole, we're looking at a player who not only has an incredible work rate and an incredible reading of the game, his ability to just see what's going on and be one step ahead of it is sublime. His shift of body weight, his shift of pace is absolutely incredible. He's left defenders in his dust time and time again this season, just with one kind of swivel of the hips. He's that kind of player that can get out of a tight situation, open a game up and make it happen. Um, so I think that in terms of 
what Liverpool are getting is someone who can kind of do it all. And I think that's going to be really intriguing as to how he fits. Well, now Carvalho makes the leap back to the Premier League and also into Jurgen Klopp's system, which raises the question, can he fit in a Jurgen Klopp system? Yeah, exactly. This is it. Do I think he can fit into a Jurgen Klopp system? Absolutely. Although I'm not completely sure how or where he plays in it just yet. I think there's something to be said for the fact that you know, he's moving to a club with one, an incredible record of developing youngsters. Um, but two, he's moving to work under a coach who has moved people around in the past and, and been incredibly successful for it. You know, Diogo Jota, much as he played maybe at parts of his Wolves career as a front, as part of the front two, was never that number nine until he walked into Liverpool and was like, oh, I want to play here now. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Fabio. I think there's equal chances that he could, as he develops, go drop back and become a really, really attacking number eight. Um, that kind of Bernardo Silva mold, perhaps, you know, that ability to to shift around in those in those spaces and make things happen. He has that intelligence. He has that tenacity as well to go and do that. Um, but equally, I think there's an element of is this Liverpool planning for a future which maybe doesn't look exactly the same as it does now. Maybe this is a shift towards the fact that, you know, ultimately Liverpool have been playing a system for you know, four or five years now, which is relatively unchanged. You know, that 4-3-3 that, that Klopp has loved since Coutinho left, basically, um, has really kind of thrived. But every manager reinvents after a while because things become stale and, you know, you, re you re replenish your squad. Sure, you change the way um, that it all works around you, but also that ability to shift shape in game in order to dominate things. Now, I think a lot of people thought this was going to happen when Jota came in and, and kind of made himself undroppable for a little while. Now, Luis Diaz is there as well. He's gone back to a, a little bit more of that traditional 4-3-3, but you can see late on in games, occasionally Liverpool drop into that four in the front and, and we've seen you know Salah play as the nine with Firmino behind him at times, uh, more last season obviously than this, but there are times where Liverpool look to change and I do wonder if Klopp is looking, now that he's signed that long-term deal, to maybe try and reinvent himself a little bit or reinvent this Liverpool side in order to accommodate something different, especially, um, you know, because people will try and work this team out. That's how football works. Everyone invents and reinvents and reinvents. And I do wonder if that's what he's going to do with Fabio or if he's going to try and push him back into an eight. And I suppose Harvey Elliott was a wide player who played 10 and has dropped back kind of into that eight role. Harvey's a little bit further on in, in kind of his physical development, I think, than Fabio. But I've seen that move happen before, and I do wonder if there's space for that. Um, but equally, there's the, the question of whether he could be a false nine. Now, Jack brings it up right there. Can he play the false nine? You know, Roberto Firmino likely either moving on at the end of the contract, if not this summer, but certainly towards the weaker end of his powers. Can Fabio Carvalho prove to be the replacement of Roberto Firmino in that false nine role? Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. It is one of those where obviously Firmino is, is set to leave, as you say. Um, and then, you know, who fills that role? Now, Sadio Mane has played nine this season. I think has probably been the pick of the bunch. I, mean, I think imagine most Liverpool fans will agree with that, especially with how good Luis Diaz has come in and been wide. But Sadio Mane offers you something slightly different in that nine role. Now, Fabio has the work rate. And, and what you have to have in that false nine, if you will, um, is the work rate to track back. It's, it's a defensive position in so many ways for Klopp. He drops deeper and allows those two wide players to cause the damage. Um, so when you're looking at it in that way, could Fabio fit that role? Yes. But I think one of the things that Bobby Firmino is hugely underrated for is that how strong he is. He's one of the strongest players, I think, out there who's underrated for it, not someone who's going to go out there and be like, oh, I am all strength. But he is such a, a, a kind of magnet in so many ways to be able to hold things off, to be able to make things happen. Um, he's such a clever footballer. Um, Fabio has the intelligence, I think, here, but not quite the strength at this point in his career. Now, whether he can kick on and get that and gain that, very possibly. Um, but I do wonder if that then comes at the expense of the things that he's currently really, really good at. Those shifts of balance, those ability to unsettle teams with one body swerve. Um, and I don't know if you'd want to make him into that false nine. Um, I know, obviously, Minamino was brought in a couple of years back and there was a lot of talk about him becoming the false nine figure for Liverpool. That never really worked out. And I do worry that the reasons that that didn't work out was because Taki Minamino... Again, a really clever, intelligent footballer who's able to make the right runs and slip into these right positions isn't quite the the middle man with that strength that you need to play this exact role. Um, and if you were trying to put him into those kind of positions, do you take away the things he's currently really good at? So is Fabio a false nine in waiting? I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I, I think he is better facing goal, driving from deep. 
um, and, and making things happen in those kind of central midfield areas. And that's what I mean about earlier when I was saying about that shift of position. And you know, I, I think Fabio is basically as close to a Coutinho regen in many ways, maybe slightly less in terms of long, long range shooting, um, but definitely in terms of carrying the ball into those areas and making things happen in that kind of space just in front of the penalty box that Liverpool probably haven't really had since Coutinho left. And I, I wonder if that's part of a, a kind of long-term plan to shift things around. But could he play in a false nine role? Yes. Will he play there for Liverpool? I don't think so. I don't think that's what Klopp wants from his number nine. So uh, it'd be one to keep an eye on, though, for sure. And the last thing for Jack in his estimation of Fabio Carvalho, is this the right move for him in his career? Again, it is one that's it's really difficult to say. You know, you look at Liverpool's track record instead of, of developing youngsters and, and it's incredible. And, and the fact that Harvey's gone there after very few appearances in a Fulham shirt and, and gone on and obviously had that loan spell, which I think Fabio probably doesn't quite need um, back in the championship. He's kind of been there and done that. He's had that with Fulham this year. They're slightly in different places in that development when they moved to Liverpool, obviously. Um, so I, I think that this is a very smart move. From Fabio, I, I think that he's looking at this and thinking, right, there is a team here, and, and especially with a front three who are starting to push towards the wrong side of their careers in terms of age. Um, Luis Diaz expect, accepted, and obviously Jota's there as well, who's a little bit younger than the Mane, Salah, Firmino. Um, but I think he's looked at that and thinks this is somewhere that in two, three years I can be a key cog in this starting eleven. Um, now, would he benefit from another year playing lower down the Premier League where he has more of the ball and able to, you know, compete? Maybe. Maybe, but equally at the bottom end of the Premier League, where Fulham will be next season, much as that hurts me to say, that these are teams that don't tend to have loads of the ball. It's not going to be the possession side that Fulham were this year. It's not going to be that relentless attacking unit that, that Fulham have been in the Championship. It's a very different ball game. Uh, and so, yes, I think probably he has. Um, like I say, it would have been lovely to see him in the Premier League. It would have been lovely to see him in a Fulham shirt, you know, cutting it at, at that level, because I think he absolutely can. Um, but equally, if this is a move to say, right, I've moved from one ball dominant side to another who relentlessly attack um, and then move in the right direction, then I can completely understand why he's made it at this point in his career. And look, I wish him every very, every success uh, at Liverpool and every success under another remarkable manager in, in Jurgen Klopp. There's a, a track record that he can point at and say, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, he will feel that he's already you know, good enough to be moving into these places. And I think you watched his younger games for Portugal. Obviously, he moved from England to Portugal's youth systems this year and walked into the team, which has a hell of a lot of stars in it, um, and immediately stood out as well as someone who was physically and you know and mentally and, and intelligently ready to to make those kind of jumps and playing with players who are playing top level football you know across Europe. So yes, I think it's an, an incredibly exciting move for him, and honestly, all all hope that it works out. Well, there you have it. Some great analysis on Fabio Carvalho from a great friend of the channel, Jack Collins. Make sure you go follow him and all the work that he does. His links will be in the description down below. If you want to see more videos like this, let us know in the comments. And what you want to see it on, we'll bring in experts from all across the world who can give you the best insight you need for everything related to Liverpool Football Club. Well, I've been Jack Edwards, and this has been a video from the LFC Transfer Room. We'll catch you next time. Take care.